<laughs> oh, that was great. That was great. Damn, I didn't know you had it like that, dude. <laughs> like that. <laughs> All right, welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Rubbing Elbows. Rubbing Elbows, welcome back. We have a fun episode. Um, this week we went out. What did we do? We did some fun stuff. Oh yeah, I mean, last week it was uh, Sunday. We had LA Grand Expo. Actually, that was amazing. I did not expect it to be as good as it was. Yeah. I I knew it was going to be pretty nice, uh, but there was close to eight hundred investors there. Well over a hundred vendors. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. I personally loved meeting all these people that, you know, we've seen all these vendors, all these speakers that are part of the Los Angeles Real Estate Investors Club, being able to meet them in person and shake their hands and see them, you know, out of their masks and wearing pants. It's great. And not just that, but we got a lot of connections. Uh, I've already followed up with so many of them. I know that you got on uh, on a call with a couple of them and Things are going to be uh, coming up in the next few episodes that are going to be very exciting. We got some uh, pretty interesting people coming to take a little bit more of a deep dive into their success, how they've done it. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But if you're not already subscribed to our channel, make sure to go to YouTube at Rubbing Elbows and subscribe to our channel. It'll help us grow our base and make sure that we get relevant content to help you crush it in real estate. You know, I want to say <clears throat> everybody asks for that. Everyone's like, please subscribe, click this, click that. Please subscribe, whatever. You know, I don't always do it, but you should do it. If you want to level up in real estate, if you want to crush it, you want to learn from from people that know what they're doing and i'm not just talking about myself i'm not trying to toot my own horn i'm not talking about leor i'm talking about for example we've got what eight or ten speakers that uh, joined us at the expo each one of these people are just experts in their field mentors i mean we had one guy who he's he's the guy who raised two billion dollars for yeah. for various projects yeah brad the two billion dollar guy that's what he's known as yeah we had we had Amy again. We we got Amy from HGTV, House Hunters. You know, all these people that you can really listen and you pick something up. I'm going to do a little snap. You pick something up and it sticks with you, resonates with you. So why don't we take a look? Let's dive in there. Let's see what's up. Yeah, let's just jump in. All right. So we got our first speaker here. And I, I know Chuck is excited. I'm excited because anytime we can find women in real estate that are powerful, uh, it's always exciting. So we have uh, Desiree Dubois with homework here let's bring her on the show and learn about what she does hey hey how are you desiree great thank you how are you doing today thank god no complaints <laughs> so why don't you tell us about homework what is, what is homework homework is where you can live where you work work where you live anywhere in the world so it's co-working co-living for women professionals and entrepreneurs so we acquire luxury homes and we design them as live work suites so women can live there full-time part-time or as a drop-in so think Airbnb meets WeWork for women. And oh, so the whole that. concept is so that people don't even need a car, right? Everything is Just right there. there. Yep, yep, yep. That's becoming a real big thing nowadays. All the big developers are getting into this lifestyle uh, we, I was just at the, the queue off Topanga, the grand opening, mm -hmm. a very similar concept, apartments, they have everything kind of there, it's right next, you could just get on your bike and go to work, um, and they have a WeWork also in the building. Yeah, well, a lot of people, since, especially since the pandemic, are working remotely, so it used to be mostly millennials and digital nomads, but now it could be anybody, any profession. And, and, and so what's unique about uh, homework? Well, one of the unique things is that the way we design the properties and their luxury style, so we believe in living in glam, and then, but they're practical. We have offices, sometimes we have studios with videos and podcasts. We have co-working lounges where we can actually go and work, or every bedroom has a working area as well. So it's just simply done. We have wine tastings, masterminds, seminars, food cooking classes, things That's like awesome. that. So it's not just a place that. to stay, it's an experience. Where do you have them like in the valley, in the city, all yep, over? We have them all over the United States. Um, we have them in London too, in London, one Jamaica. 
Um, we're just opening up a new one in San Diego where it has 12 bedrooms and 12 baths. It's 1905 home. So it's just really wow. beautiful. And it's all women? Yep, women professionals and entrepreneurs. So what would you tell women that, you know, are maybe hesitant to get into real estate? They're afraid that it's male dominant. What, what tip would you give them? Well, that's changing quite a bit, especially now. But you, I would say connect with one of the groups and organizations. There's a lot of real estate meetups. And then go, be educated and then partner with somebody for something your first project. That way you're utilizing their experience and whatever you're bringing to the table. And then slowly, virtually go out on your own. That's amazing. Empowering women. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We always say this, and I told you, you know, off air, we both are dads to... Um, young girl little dads, ladies, girl dads. and we love uh, we love anything that uh, empowers women, and we're so happy to have you on. Well, thank you. Yeah, so thank you for coming and sharing with thank us. You. you are incredible. We look forward to uh, interacting again in the future. All right. Anytime. Thank you. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you, Chuck. We have one of our favorite past uh, guests from the show. She's back. She's back. We got to meet her finally live and in color. And you know what? In my opinion, it was the most valuable episode we had on how to raise capital. Welcome to the episode, Amy Majuri. Hey, how are you? Thank you. You guys are too kind. It is amazing to be here and it's so great to meet you guys in person. I'm very excited for today. Fantastic. We're happy to have you. Um, we, where do we start? Where do we start? I mean, um, we got so much last time around, but, um, uh, you know, what, what, what can we expect today? We know that you're going to be one of the headline speakers, uh, towards the end. Uh, you want to give us a little snippet on yes, what you're going to be talking about? Absolutely. So the power of private money, right? And how we can grow and scale our real estate businesses with private money because there are a hundred things we can do with access to capital. Um, whether we're new or experienced investors, whether we're part-time or full-time. Um, I was just talking to someone today about buying rental properties, investing in commercial syndication, buying multifamily properties, starting a hard money fund, brokering deals. It's like whatever you want is possible when you have access to cash. I have a question regarding um hard money uh, uh, some sort of a fund for hard money there's is it a misconception that you need to have a, a special license to be able to manage these funds somebody with like a series six or series seven or whatever it is great question if you want to start your own hard money fund there are sec regulations that you have to go through and comply with um but that's a completely different conversation right so once you know how to raise the capital that's a good problem to have right. then you can go look into getting sec regulated and starting your own fund could you bring like a broker of record to handle that to you? You know, that I've never started a fund. I looked into it. I believe there are ways you can, yeah, have a business partner or someone, but I don't, I can't answer that in detail. Got it. Got it. Okay. I'm sure you can partner up with a hard money lender and say, hey, I'm bringing the funds. You know, you take a point for doing the transaction for us, but it's all your licensing, all your credentials. Yes, there are ways to make that happen. And I don't know if this is right, so don't hold me to it. It might be called like a sidecar agreement, um, but there's some sort of an attachment that you can bring to the table if you wanted to JV, joint venture with someone on a deal like that. Yeah, as long as they're partners in some capacity, I think yeah. that that makes it okay. So, you know, we, we asked the, the past guest about this uh, specific to women, but with you, I want to keep it more general. In terms of people that are feeling like they missed an opportunity, the boom is like behind, what do you tell those people that are like nervous to get involved in real estate today? Oh my God, it's, there's, the opportunity is now, and there's always an opportunity to buy and invest in real estate. It doesn't matter if there's an economic downturn, a crash, none of that matters, you guys. What matters is when we buy and how we buy and our buying criteria. So even during a recession, if we have systems in place, as real estate investors, we can make money. It doesn't matter if you're in the armpit of America or in downtown LA. So none of that matters as long as you have a buying criteria in place and you know how to analyze deals. Right, and the, the people armpit, that know... The armpit of America, I've never heard that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm gonna start using that. So, you know, people are always making money in real estate. Not everybody makes money always, but there are people that do. And as long as they do, you need to find those people and learn from them. Yeah, you know, a lot of people don't agree with me on this. I always say we make our money when we buy. We realize our profits when we sell. So as long as we buy right and we are buying below market value, then the probability of us turning a profit is likely. 
Yeah, and, I, and I'm sure, you know, each deal is its own unique deal. And, yeah. And there is no, you know, right uh, one size fits all for this question. But in, in general, are you more about buy and hold or buy and flip? That's a great question. As a newbie, when I started 10, 9, 10 years ago, I was all about fixing and flipping. I love the renovation process. Now that I don't have to do all of that, I love it. But I'm focused more on passive income. So buying rental properties or investing into commercial syndications. Yeah, absolutely. Commercial syndication, we need to talk about that more. Can you give us a little highlight? A little highlight, yeah. <laughs> so for in, when you want to invest in a commercial syndication, you basically, as an accredited investor, you take a chunk of change and you go invest it with a credible um, real estate investor out there who found, like, for example, a third, we invested for the sake of putting numbers out there. Can I put some numbers out there? Yes. Okay, I'm very direct. So we put 100 grand into a commercial syndication. The, the owner of that syndication bought the um, building for 31 million, okay, three years ago. They just sold it for 47 or 49 million. Um, now, deals don't always come this great, right? But we're just silent investors. So we put in 100 grand and we made a very nice return in just three and a half years. Instead of putting our money in the bank, we put it with him and we basically doubled our money. Yeah, and, and that's on the flip side. There's also ways to teach people how to raise their own syndication and get yeah. capital in from multiple investors at once. Yeah, because once you know how to raise capital, then you're going to have more money coming in than you need. So why not syndicate a deal yourself or start brokering out your funds to other investors who are credible, right? But all this said, you guys, look, we don't... There are risks to investing in real estate, right? We're not going to turn a profit always. on every single deal. We've made money. We've lost money. So that was just an example of opportunities out there when you have access to cash. Right. Yeah. And, you know, that's that's such an important uh, point that you bring up. And that's why it's important to stay consistent with your investing. Yeah. Because there are going to be downtimes. But if you're consistent and you have enough investments out there and you diversify, that's where the profits come Yeah. In. Diversification is huge. So we do residential. We do commercial. Um, yeah, I agree. Tell us a little bit about the show on HGTV. Uh, so it was just a four-part series. It was pretty fun. I actually had dinner with the producer last night. And um, are they going to bring you back? Or are you not allowed to say? <laughs> actually, or? I might come back more as like a, a rehabbing expert advisor right. for other buyers looking for distressed properties. But it was on a show that's been on for nine, ten years. It was on House Hunters. Right. But they put a little spin on it to where they followed my transition um, through a four-part series from corporate America into real estate. Um, so that was cool that, that that got to unfold on a nationwide network. Um, but yeah, I we've talked about bringing me back as a consultant, and it's fun for me, and it's not time consuming, so we'll see. And I'm sure it's tons of exposure, and I mean, there's no bad, bad parts. No, it's great, of course, for credibility, and uh, private money lenders love it, right? Um, but it's also just fun. Like I love this stuff. What yeah, you guys do? I love it too. Uh, you have it's to great. love it. You have and to. And as long it. as you have like a good, you know. A good perception of, of things and not not get into you know this whole drama or you know you know you know you gotta surf whatever it is you know whatever yeah. waves there are you no know? drama no competition like everyone's here to have fun and that's the number one reason I got into real estate was just to have fun and work with people that I enjoy working with yeah you know what I, I do I, I do have one final question because Chuck and I try to preach this so much on why is it so important to come to these type of expos. Can you talk about that a little bit? <laughs> sure, it's an amazing networking opportunity, but more importantly, this has nothing to do with raising capital. I always talk about, and I preach like building your power team, right? So you wanna be very selective with who you choose to surround yourselves with. So we have realtors here, we've got contractors here, we've got developers, investors. So we're gonna grow and scale faster and have more success if we put ourselves into environments like this where we can meet like-minded people with common goals and common right. values and common reasons for wanting to be successful. Exactly, Absolutely. exactly. Well, Amy, thank you so much. You're even more beautiful in person. Thank you. Thank You're you for too coming kind. out. And, thank uh, you. And jumping on the show again. Thank you, guys. It was great being here with you today. And I'll anytime. see you at 3.30. And we'll yes. have you back anytime. Anytime. Thank you. So we got a special treat, uh, Chuck, our next speaker. Why don't you introduce him? We've got Brad Blazer, a.k.a. the $2 billion sure. guy. Yes, let's here bring him is. on. Hey, Brad, how are you, buddy? I'm doing great, man. So exciting to be here with you guys today at this big expo. This is a balling event. Man. This is Yeah, this is awesome. This is you know, we didn't expect that many people to be out here. You yeah. never know nowadays coming back from the pandemic. Yep. 
So tell us a little bit about you know what you do, how you raise your capital. Just give us a little snippet of uh, who Brad is. Sure. Well, you know, I started my journey as an entrepreneur back when I was actually in my 20s. I mean, I was a young kid going to college, like a lot of your listeners probably, and uh, you know, went to work for a small oil company where my job was to get on the phone and basically take a list and reach out to people and build trust, build a relationship so that ultimately they would invest with us. And I just got to be real good at it. I mean, I was working 12 to 15 hour weeks between classes after school and was making close to a hundred grand as a 21 year old kid, which, you know, when you're a smart kid working 12 to 15 hours, you're like, well, shit, I wonder how much more I can make if I devoted my time and did it for 40 hours a week. So uh, I never told my parents what my plans were. I just quit going to class, dropped out of college, went to work for a second company. And unfortunately, that second company, uh, they were committing fraud. And so I resigned, I organized all my investors. We uh, filed a class action suit, we won. And then I started an oil company. I was 23 years old, I never drilled a well. I didn't know anything about running a business. All I knew how to do was just get on the phone and talk to people and raise money. And I've been doing that now for 30 years. And you know, when you do something for 30 years, like Tiger Woods just played golf, you get to be pretty good at it. And so fast forward, I've raised over $2 billion through my efforts, the efforts of teams I put together and led. And uh, today we got a global program called Capital School, where we basically teach people all around the world how to attract, how to raise, how to close investor capital so that they can build, buy, or scale their business. How, how do our listeners find that? How, how do they get involved? Well, you can, number one, go to my website. It's just www.bradblazar.com. And my last name is spelled B-L-A-Z, like zebra, A-R. And we're going to throw that right there on the screen yep, right there's, now. There's information there about my books, about my coaching programs. Uh, you can buy swag there. You can check it out. We've got a big event coming up that we do every year. It's in April 2022. We had our event this year in Houston. I had Shark Tank's Kevin Harrington as one of my speakers. We had Sharon Lecter. She was the co-author and really the brains behind the Rich Dad, Poor Dad umpire with Robert Kiyosaki. We had Dr. Kevin Elko. We had um, just a lot of professional real estate people, capital raisers. That event's in April of next year, so check it out. But, um, you know, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. You just Google my name. I mean, I'm everywhere on the Internet, man. Fantastic. <laughs> Sounds like you got your 10,000 hours, like, by the time you're 25. <laughs> Pretty much. You know, yeah, exactly. But, you know, it's all I know, and it's so funny. I mean, I was talking downstairs earlier. I had a revelation where I saw Steve Harvey one day on TV, and he said, look, everybody has, like, something special. If you can figure out what that something special is, create content around it and then deliver it to the world it'll change your life and essentially that's what i did my son special is i know how to raise money better than anybody i've ever met and more importantly know how to teach it better than anybody i've ever met that's fantastic yeah. so you're obviously you know a pro now you know what you're doing but when you first got started do you remember your first deal how, how did you make that happen <laughs> Oh, I remember it vividly, yeah. You know, uh, we're all rookies at some point in our life. I made pretty much every mistake you could ever make. But when I started raising money in my oil company, the first thing I did is I called the geologist. And I said, look, I know how to raise money. If you can bring me deals, I think I can raise the money. We can get these deals funded. And so partnered up with a couple people. Then, of course, I got a good securities attorney, you know, got a CPA. And I started building what I call your team. you got to build a team of people around you. Because the biggest problem as an entrepreneur is you don't know what you don't know. And that's a message that everybody needs to hear. It's like there are people out there that have the knowledge and the information you need. And you're just one connection away, literally, from changing your life. And so I did that, started raising money. Then I started hiring people. And I started teaching people literally how to do what I had learned to do. And a lot of people that are listening to this are probably wondering, like, can you teach me how to raise money? Well, let me share a story with you. So when I was in the oil business, our office was in a very prestigious building. We had the whole third floor, and it was in Austin, Texas. And, you know, we were looking to hire salespeople to get on the phone and pitch investors. And so one day this guy shows up. You know, imagine this in your mind. He's showing up for a job interview. We're in one of the most prestigious buildings in Austin, Texas, and there for an interview is a guy with jeans on that had holes in the knees. He had on work boots covered with dust and mud, a flannel shirt, he had a Fu Manchu mustache, a mullet for a haircut, and for anybody that's ever seen the movie, Joe Dirt, <laughs> he was Joe's first cousin. <laughs> but there was something about him, I don't know what it was, and I said, look man, let's go get a cup of coffee, let me get to know you. And when I said, Jack, why do you want to work here? He gave me an answer that changed his life. 
I believe that you need to know what your purpose is to be massively successful. And when I asked him, Jack, why do you want to work here? He said, as you can see, Mr. Blazer, I'm a real simple guy. I mean, I apologize for showing up like this, but my wife and my daughter have big dreams and visions, and I just want to give them everything in life that they deserve. And I was like, I was like, wow. I said, dude, if you can be here Monday morning at 8.30, I'll give you the shot of a lifetime. He jumped up, he hugged me. Now, after seeing where he was going to work, you think he would have dressed a little bit more appropriately? Uh-uh. He shows up dressed exactly the same way. And I'm looking at this guy who's got to get on the phone and talk to rich people who are going to send his checks for fifty and $100,000. They got to even have a suit. And I'm like, Brad, you just fucked this kid over, man. He just quit his job. He's sitting here. He don't have a job now. And he's going to work for you. How is this guy going to get on the phone and convince people to send us checks for hundreds of thousands of dollars. And, I'm just, and he's like, I'm ready to go, man. Like, teach me everything, you know. And so I said, come with me, buddy. We got downstairs into my Porsche. I took him to a department store and I literally, I treated him to two suits. I really dressed him from head to toe. And then I took him to my barber. I said, let's give this dude a Hollywood makeover like we see on TV. Get rid of all the mustache and all the shit. Cleaned him up. When we came back into my office about three hours later, my receptionist didn't even recognize the dude as the same guy that walked out the door. But he came to work the next day feeling much better about himself, had a little bit of swag, and then I gave him the same scripts and the same training that I give to everybody. That year, he raised $25 million and a quarter of a million dollars in commission. Amazing. And here's the wow. thing. That skill set and what I taught him has stayed with him throughout life. Today, he's a successful financial advisor in Austin, Texas, managing about $600 million, making over half a, bill, I mean, half a billion dollars a year, dude. I mean, that I story that. says yep. it all. I mean, So if I can teach him and everybody else that's come through my program how to raise money, I guarantee I can teach anybody that wants to learn how to so do So what, you know, piggybacking off of that yep. story, what is the most important trait that somebody just naturally needs to have to become successful, in your opinion? I think there's a couple things. I think number one, it's confidence. Uh, you got to have the right mindset. Here's what I've learned, folks, and I've been on some of the biggest podcasts in the world. Next week, I'm speaking alongside Brandon Dawson, that's Grant's business partner at 10X. I'll be sharing the stage with boxing legend Floyd Mayweather, with Bobby Castro, who sold this company for one and a half billion dollars. Rich the Kid, the rapper, is going to be there. I mean, that dude's got 300 million followers on YouTube. So, an amazing lineup. But here's the one thing I will tell you. Most people are not where they want to be in life because you get to a level where you're complacent and you're comfortable. You're like, man, I got a nice house. I got a nice car. You know, I'm making decent money. There is a big difference, though, between living an ordinary life and living an extraordinary life. And I call it prey drive. Prey drive is the ability to see something in your mind or with your eyes and then pursue it, chase it until you catch it. And the problem is in most people, your prey drive is dormant. It has not been activated. And prey drive can be activated by an external force. Like, for example, I take people on our private jet. A couple months ago, I took seven lucky passengers for the trip of a lifetime. They flew from me to Houston to Nashville where I was speaking at an event. They're like, holy shit, man, going tr uh, commercial sucks. I'm like, it does. Hopefully, I opened and exposed your mind to what it's like to be able to afford to do this because that jet round trip, what no thousand dollars it was a $25,000 round trip wow. okay I'm doing the same thing actually next weekend as I fly from Houston to Miami on that same jet taking a couple of other people so your prey drive can be activated by competition by exposure to bigger things in life but once it's exposed and activated it's then the pursuit it's like man I'm hungry I want more success I want what he has and so I tell people, if you just want to be rich for the Lambo or for the watch or for the nice house, great. But let me tell you, that shit disappears. Yeah. If you have a purpose and you're racking and stacking money and you're investing it wisely, at some point your life will oh, change. Yeah. All the big gurus tell you that, exactly. right? The you why. What is the why? And tap into that why. You tap into your why. But I'll tell you, the most important thing is you got to be confident, dude. Investors and other entrepreneurs look at confidence they look at your communication skills and they look at your ability to execute a strategy. Right. When I interviewed Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank, he said, look, all of us that are up there, me, Cuban, Kevin O'Leary, we don't invest in great ideas. You could come to any one of us and say, man, I got the greatest idea that's going to make us millions of dollars. And you're not going to get funded because you haven't convinced us that you and your team 
can execute on a strategy to deliver returns to us as investors. That's right. the key. Right, right. They're investing in you. Exactly. They're investing in you. Exactly. Well, well there you have it, Brad Blazar. Yep. Go look him up. Go follow him if you want to be successful in yep. real estate. Make sure to look this guy up and follow him. And man, what you've got the most amazing charisma and energy, man. I, I love, love it, bro. Man. Thank you, Chuck. I love appreciate it. it well, thank you for coming and uh, sharing Absolutely, with us and bro. jumping on. We appreciate it. Yeah. We'll jump on your show. And by the uh, way, soon. this is a great event. This is a great podcast. You know, we can help you get from where you are to where you want to be. And it's not just about other people's money. A lot of you out there hear me when I say this. You're on drugs. Okay, the drug you're on is what I call hope. You're hoping shit gets better for you. You're hoping your condition improves. You're hoping you're gonna get more money in the bank. Hopium ain't the right drug. It's opium, using other people's money. Check us out at Capital School. This is Brad Blazer saying thank you so much for me being here, buddy. My man, my man, love it. thank love you so it. much. Love it. love it, love it, love it. All right, we are back and we have a special treat. Another returning speaker from our podcast, uh, Mrs. Deborah Razzo with the Women's Real Estate Network. Let's bring her on the show. How are you, Deborah? Hey, hey welcome back. Thank you. I'm glad to be back, guys. It's so wonderful to be out and about these days. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us, uh, what can we expect here at the uh, expo today? Because people are finally getting comfortable to come back in person. We are Zoomed out already with all the Zoom networking events. Zoomed but what out. are you expecting to get today? Yeah, you know, it's really nice to see a group of people coming back for the love of real estate, right? Um, so many different people, so many different vendors here. Um, our, you know, organization itself concentrates on women. There's a lot of women here. I'm I'm very impressed by the diversity here. And, um, you know, it looks like everybody's getting some great information. Uh, it's just been a really great, fun thing to do. I've missed everybody. I can't tell you how many people I've been up and hugging. It's been wonderful. That's so funny. I've seen people here walk around, you know, without masks. And I'm like, can you put your mask on so I can recognize you? Because I only know you on Zoom. Oh, I only know you with a mask on. <laughs> Absolutely. And I hear you about getting Zoomed out. I mean, I have to say I'm thankful for Zoom because it's kept us all connected this past year, right? Yeah. Year and a half or so. And, you know, we've continued to operate uh, with the Women's Real Estate Network over Zoom. And it's actually been kind of expansive because we're talking to women all over the United States, you know, and all kinds of different women investors. So that's really been great. Yeah, it definitely created new opportunities and new ways of doing business and interacting. So so that's definitely one positive that came out of it. I remember before the pandemic, when people wanted to work for me remotely, I was just not even able to consider that. I just need to feel like the person is there in my office. That's yeah. gone out the window. Now we can hire people. We can hire talent anywhere in the world. Uh, and it's really expanded you know expanded everything for us so. I think it's changing things all over the place you know not only is it changing the way that we think about working in our own offices but it's changing the way that we think about real estate I mean recently I've come into contact with so many women they're doing such innovative things I you know they're buying real estate with blockchain they're 3d printing auxiliary dwelling units they're you know doing uh, short-term rental arbitrage you know it's it's incredible what we come up with when we're kind of forced out of our comfort zone and this last year I've been forced out of my comfort zone I don't know about you guys but you know, it's been a change yeah agreed a hundred percent on that a hundred percent your third guest today that is involved with um, some form of uh, empowering women or women's council or right we've got women's network women's yep. networking um so we we love having uh, a guest like yourselves on and uh what uh, what what else do we want to talk about um are you are you just here as a guest as a vendor or no you're, she's she's you're speaking. speaking she's speaking today yeah i'm i'm actually hosting i'm uh, you know helping introduce people and speaking a little bit about you know our my business model personally like i've been flipping and developing in los angeles for a long time and you know also getting into single family and multifamily investments outside of LA for past passive income cash flow and um, it's really exciting and I think there's a lot of people who have thought that maybe with this you know with the pandemic that we everything is shut down and it's not you know there's all kinds of different deals out there I think you just have to keep keep looking outside 
of the box and, and you know, look for different ways to make money in deals. And um, they're all there. So, yeah. and I think the, a lot of the speakers that are here today are speaking like that too. You know, you, you pointed something out specifically outside of LA. Can you tell us why? Sure, yeah, I can tell you a lot of reasons why. Um, you know, here's my truth, and that is um, when I first started investing and living in LA, I really did want to invest here and make some passive income, but right. the numbers are so high here. Real estate is very costly compared to other parts of the country, and the numbers are so high here, I couldn't really make a cash flow. And that's, that's the whole point. I mean, let's face it. You know, the point of investing is to send your money out there and for it to come back with as many friends as possible. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, right? So I thought- if Friends I could, are good. Yeah, I thought if I'm gonna invest in long-term stuff, I want it to come back with as many friends as possible. So I started really researching the different markets that were high in passive income, high in cash flow. And then I learned, I learned ways to invest there without feeling like I was so vulnerable and at risk. I think a lot of people look at investing farther away from them. They feel like there's a lot of risk to mitigate out there. And the fact of the matter is, like, you have to learn to find a team that you trust. You right. have to learn to, like, really be consistent with your follow-up with them and build those relationships so right. that you can um, you can foster the the advantage of investing in other markets. Yeah, absolutely. And having boots on the ground is crucial, making sure that you can analyze the deals properly. Yeah. I mean, I love investing outside of Los Angeles. I thought maybe rent control had something to do with it. It does. I mean, you know, there's there's a lot of disadvantages for landlords in Los Angeles. Right, right. And, and I currently happen to be one, uh, not not really by choice, but you know, by default. And um, you know, and there's restrictions. There's a lot of restrictions. Where with my other rentals, there aren't as many restrictions, and I'm able to make more passive income. And you know, you learn, like you said, boots on the ground. You know, you learn to communicate with people. I I always jokingly say, well, I give really good phone. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> that's how I get through. <laughs> Yeah, I have a question regarding um, when you say outside of LA, you're still in California or you're out in California altogether? No, I, I actually still have investments in California, but I also have investments in Memphis, Tennessee, Tucson, Arizona, and Houston. Texas. And I'm actually venturing out into the Puerto Rican market. Really? I am. You know how many people are going to Puerto Rico? Hello, the tax advantages are amazing there. Yeah. And it's still part of the U.S. Part of the U.S. court system, part of the U.S. currency, part of the U.S. franchise system. It's really incredible opportunities that are happening down there. So, so yeah. So, I, I would love to ask you a question because you're obviously expanding into new territories, right? How would somebody that is interested in getting into into out-of-state investments, but doesn't really know where to begin, how to build a team, how to get those boots on the ground, any tips that you can give beginners? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, educate. I mean, first off, you have to educate and network. I mean, those are the two basic things, right? First, you need to know how to run your numbers. I mean, you really got to learn your numbers because you need to make sure that whatever you're investing in is going to be coming back to you and, and what that looks like. And the second thing is networking. And the networking is not only for boots on the ground. The networking is for people that have done business with the people that you're doing business with that have good recommendations, that have great sources that have, um, you know, that can tell you how to, uh, how to invest in a better way in those markets. So yeah, those right. are, those are the two top things. Great, great advice. Amazing advice. So Chuck always has this favorite question, right? What is your favorite phrase or quote? Sure. I, um, usually pick a quote a year and I kind of, live by that. It influences me during that year. And my favorite year was um, a Tony Robbins quote, and it says, the quality of your life is directly related to how much uncertainty you can comfortably tolerate. And it was an incredible year because when I was faced with decisions, I would think which one is the most uncertain, and then I would choose that. Wow. Wow. That year was so 
mind blowing. When you are thrown into uncertainty and things you don't know how to do, not only does it make you resourceful, right? Like it makes you, oh, I've got to pull myself together and I've got to find out people who know how to do this, but it also builds your confidence. And that year was so remarkable that I did that quote two years in a row. <laughs> I love that. It was great. You know, that takes a lot of courage to be able to even tap into that and, and do that. How do you find that courage? <laughs> I don't know that I ever think of it as courage. I think of it more as like, all right just do it and let's see how this goes right but that's how you build things right that's how you i mean you venture out into stuff what do they say knowledge is power no knowledge isn't power knowledge in action is power yeah right like you've got so to just true. venture out into stuff so and true. i think real estate investing is a lot like that especially for the newbies so if there's any newbies out there listening you know if you you're hesitating you just got to get in yeah. you just got to make those steps and get in because the then you figure it out. You gotta Nike that thing and just do it. <laughs> you totally just do. do it. Just do it. <laughs> That's my second favorite quote. <laughs> you know, my favorite quote as of from the last guest that we had here a couple of minutes ago, as he said, you don't know what you don't know. And I've, I've heard that before, yeah. but it hit differently today. You don't know what you don't know. You don't know everything. And you don't know what you don't know. Right? Yeah. So that hits definitely. But yeah. we want to thank you so, so much for taking a couple of minutes and sitting with us. Yeah, it's so always fun to sit with you guys. Yes, absolutely. You know, Reunion Women's Real Estate Network. Look her up, and I'm sure she would love to connect. Yeah, Anybody absolutely. here in this type of an environment loves to network, loves to grow their connections. So look her up and uh, get together. Yeah, if there's any out, women out there uh, listening, go to www.redinspires.com. And even those men that are interested in getting their wives involved, send them my way. There you go. There okay. you go. I like that. Deborah, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank again. you. Thank, thank you, guys. All right, Chuck, you ready for the next one? This one's going to be fun. You know why? Why? It's what we love, man. It's having fun while making money in real estate. We have a special guest, Austin Grant, uh, known as Grant Real Estate on TikTok. He has over 150,000 followers. Over and a million views. He's got a million likes. Likes, likes. Likes. So probably a billion. Let's views. bring him on. Austin, how are you, my man? I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? Doing great, doing great. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on. This so, is exhilarating. I love this conference. Yeah. T tell us a little bit about how, how you got started on social media. Everybody's always trying to become the next, you know, viral thing and mm. so hard. So why don't you tell us how you got started? I actually got started on my fourth day in real estate. I've only been a licensed realtor for about a year now. And I was with a firm in Beverly Hills. It was a bigger firm, big brand name. I won't name names. And... It was my fourth day. We always day. name names. We always name names. No, we won't name <laughs> names on this one. Uh, it was my fourth day in real estate. We're having a meeting on Zoom about marketing ourselves. And I was like, uh, I don't know anything about real estate, but I hear TikTok. You could really pop off. You can make your first video and have 10 million views. And I tried to encourage the idea, hey, guys, we should do TikTok. This would be awesome. And, you know, like in the industry, older people a lot of like ego alpha male type of mentality they don't right. want to focus on the new thing if you got a new idea and it involves doing something silly like tiktok like screw you well, if they're not used to it and they're not comfortable they're not they're not having it yeah they're not having it and it was yeah. annoying and so you know i took it with a grain of salt i asked someone at my firm you know do you want to mentor me i'm so new to real estate will you do a tiktok with me and she was like yes and so we do this TikTok, and uh, she was really getting nervous like the whole way through. She didn't, she wasn't comfortable being on like a phone camera. Didn't want to do it. And I was like, "Don't worry. Like tomorrow we'll wake up with like a hundred thousand views." And we woke up with half a million. Wow. And the whole video was just about how to buy a house in California. And we talked about FHA loans, and we talked to first-time home buyers about how they can buy a house without a twenty percent down payment with a three point five FHA loan. And so we woke up with uh, 500,000 views, and it ended up being almost 2 million at the end of the day. Oh man, that's awesome. And it was my fourth day in real estate. I had no clue what I was doing, and I had all these leads from social media, and all of a sudden, on a dime, their mentalities about TikTok and social media changed because they wanted access to these leads. Right. And I had these grown men, I had these very vicious like tycoons in the, in the game you know coming at me they're like oh i want to be your mentor don't go with this person uh -huh. like they're awful <laughs> now everybody wants come with you. me come with me and then you know 
I had people calling my mom because she was like my emergency contact on my list. Just like, hey, like I like your son. How you doing? Mention me. And it got very brutal to the point where I had to leave that firm after a week of being there. And I went to a, a small firm in West Hollywood called The Collective. And it couldn't have been a better fit for me because the broker, his name's Anthony Volan. He's the president-elect of the Greater Realtor Association of Los Angeles. And he said, come on in. He, his firm was right down the street from my house. I gave him a call. He said, come on in and welcomed me with open arms. Him and his fiance, they're getting married. His name's David, very lovely man. And That's I was awesome. a broke kid, you know, I didn't have any money. They bought me lunch, they put me on a lunch plan. They said, hey, here's a key to the office, come in, do TikToks. And I did, it was so very fun. What do you wow. say to people that say, you know, yeah, you can get famous on TikTok, Instagram, but you don't really get business out of it. What do you say to them? I say, you're probably doing it the wrong way. And you're, uh, you're, you're probably shoving business down their throat. Like, if you view any of uh, the successful TikToks or the success, successful content creation, they're very educational, but they're very educational in a very funny way. It's like an right. infomercial. And that's how you can convert content into business is by being relatable, by being funny, and by being memorable. Because you have to remember, people don't go on YouTube, they don't go on TikTok or Instagram to learn about real estate, they don't go to learn about credit. They go to be entertained. Yeah. That is the very first thing that they go on social media 100%. for. So if you don't have a single entertainment aspect to your content or to any of your pictures or videos, then they're not going to turn into business because they're not entertained. If have they you, wanted business, they'd go on Google or look you up. Have you taken advantage of like any of the sponsored options through TikTok? Maybe your broker gives you a budget for it or something like that. Is that even an option? Mm, it, it is an option. It's, a, it's an option to join like the creator fund on TikTok where TikTok pays you to make content. And especially if you're a business, they'll pay you. But I tried that for a little bit. And when I was doing that, I noticed that my views and my engagement were going down. Because when TikTok had to pay me for these videos, they weren't pushing the video out through the algorithm. Oh yeah. But when I was they doing were it, yeah, when I was doing it for free, they were more likely to have that video explode. Because why would you pay someone to make the same video when someone's going to do it for free? Right. Yeah. That makes sense. So were you TikTok famous before real estate? No, no. It was uh, my very first video. Yeah. And you see, uh, yeah. so you just need to get out there and do it. And. Be, be a, you know, you got to have a personality first mm -hmm. and foremost, right? And, and as Austin said, don't try to shove your business down their throat. Go out there, have fun, educate. You know, things are going viral nowadays just because they're interesting, not because they're selling. And if people like you, they're going to want to do business with you. Yeah, and, you know, you have to make the content that you like. Don't focus on what the follower wants. Don't focus on what you think people will like. If you genuinely make something you enjoy doing, people will watch it simply because they love that mirror effect. Of, right. This is genuine stuff. And it's not something I would do. It's not something that I'm looking for. It's something that I stumbled upon and that I happen to like. Those are the things that people really get addicted to. They follow. So, so how, much, how much time do you spend on creating your content and... How many times a week do you upload content to be uh, consistent and relevant? I upload content, depends on what kind of content you're doing. If you're doing like the, the 15 second trends and you're just trying to conform to what's popular, which is a very successful way to do it if you uh, have the mentality for it. Mine, I create scripts and I create scenarios. I try to make them fun. Like I had a James Bond video that a lot of people liked and it was just about buying a four unit rental property. There was a whole script and music to that. That took about an hour and a half to do. And I try to spend at least two days a week making content so that the other five days I can do business. Usually it's the weekends unless I have like showings. If I have showings, they take over the weekend. So I have to do that Monday, Tuesday. It's only content. I'll make seven to 10 videos and I'll have them in the pipeline. So when I'm doing this content, I create 10 videos in one day. And so the next 10 days, I don't have to worry about it. All I have to do is press a button and it's posted. Do you use any apps to kind of schedule your posts? No, I uh, put them in my uh, drafts on TikTok. There's a little section on the app to where you can make a bunch of videos and put them in a small file called yeah. like your drafts. And whenever you're ready to post them, you post them. Yeah. So I've seen some of your stuff, hilarious and educational, as you said. 
How do our viewers find you on TikTok? Uh, Grant Real Estate. That's it. Uh, if I'm not on your For You page, you can look me up on the search engine. Grant, G-R-A-N-T, Real Estate. And it's very Grant fun. Real Estate, and we're going to throw that on the screen. I've got a question. Yeah, what ahead. if, just thinking out loud, okay, spitting ball here, um, what if you were to do, if we wanted to say, hey, do a TikTok of getting ready for a podcast. I'm just thinking out loud. It doesn't, you know what I mean? And creating some sort of a dramatic, you know, funny kind of, oh my God, I'm getting on this podcast, right? Mm -hmm. In reality, it's just you're sitting, answering questions, engaging, talking, whatever. Um, is that something that you could potentially do for other agents and be able to sell it to them? Is that a service you think you can potentially do one day? Oh, of course. If any uh, real estate agent or broker wanted to uh, have me as like a coach for their TikTok, they could always rent out my time. I don't really have a specific uh, amount that I'll do, but I'm sure I could figure out something to someone who really wants to blow up on the app. But I will say this one piece of advice that I think makes my TikTok successful is that I never break the fourth wall. You know what that means? No, nope. tell that us mean? about it. The fourth wall is like uh, you're talking to the audience. You know, so if I'm in my camera and I say, hey guys, like come join our podcast or yeah. come do this, that's breaking the fourth wall because I'm talking to the audience. Yeah. The fourth wall, it's a actor's term or any kind of theater. It's where you create a scene and of course they're watching, but you're not talking to the viewer. You're talking to the person you want to talk to as another character. Yeah. So if I was going to have people come on a podcast, I'd be like, oh man, I'm so excited for this podcast. And I'd have another character be like, oh, what's it about? I'd say, oh, it's real estate. This is, uh, we're going to teach people how to buy multifamily properties. And you would say, well, what's it going to be about? Oh, you know, we're just going to talk about FHA loans, first time home buyers, tenants, stuff like that. And I would do that instead of being like, hey guys, I have a podcast going on at 8 o'clock. Be sure to be there. There's yeah. a million people that like that. That is some real valuable information. Yeah, you heard great. it here first. Make sure that you take that, yeah. you find him, you follow him. And at the end of the day, we're all here to network and make connections. Uh, absolutely love having you on the show. Thank you Thank very you much for so joining much. us. Thank you guys so much. Never break the fourth wall. Yeah. Never break the fourth <laughs> wall. That, man. Have a Thank good you, one. Man. Thank all right, you. all right. We are back, and we have a special, special treat. Take a look at my next guest speaker. Chuck, what up, man? What up? <laughs> you see, we learned something today. I learned something today. I'm sure you picked on that, too. Um, you could be TikTok famous. You could have over 150,000 followers, over 1 million likes, but you're still coming out, shaking hands, kissing babies, Making connections. Just like the two, mil two billion dollar guy over there. He's out here. He's out here. Shaking hands, kissing babies, baking cookies. And the only reason they got there is because they started networking and they love what they do. So I, I guess you're saying that they all started at the bottom, now they're here? Started from the bottom, now we're here. In there, right? My boy Joe is here. He came, uh, he came uh, to learn. He told me he just went into one of the sessions and he learned about 1031 exchanges and how he can sell his investment and buy a new investment and not have to change his taxes or pay taxes or capital gains and all that, which we all know. But he learned things that he never heard of before, like the timeline and in between and how you could actually take advantage of those, uh, those things that have been set up for us, but you know, we don't always tap into them. Yeah. I gotta say, we have such a prime location here. This is the best spot in the in yeah, the house. We're, we're on stage. Yeah, we're but on the, stage. but having they gave, a vantage they gave us point, respect. They having a vantage point, being able to see everybody. Yeah, here we go. Just slowly turn it around. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Look at this room. This room is gorgeous. Yeah, look I at that. I think my prom was here. I know when we were gonna get married, we looked at this place. A lot of weddings happen here. We were never gonna get married. Oh, you and your wife. Yeah. yeah. And my wife. <laughs> All right. So, what? Um, are you glad we came? Yeah, this is this has been a cool, uh, definitely a cool spot to be in. I will say though that uh, I love wholesalers. The people that have come up to us just because we're in a position of being here on stage with this whole gorgeous setup, it makes it look super important. But just the connections that we're making and the people that we've met. I'm going to yeah. take a minute to, to, to break and say that, again, if you're not following us already, it would help our channel tremendously. If you go follow us, subscribe to our YouTube channel, at Rubbin' Elbows. 
and uh, follow us on Instagram. We're also going to start a TikTok page now that we got the TikTok king here. We just like started a TikTok, but we haven't really started advertising it. Yeah. I think it's time. I think it's time. I think you're right. I think it's time too. I mean, I told my my daughter that she can run my TikTok page, but um, I don't know, man. She might. We need. We might need to bring your daughter as a you know co-creator. All right, we got a special treat. We got uh, Mr. Paul Fink, and he's going to come on and tell us uh, a little bit. You know, I'm not going to even give it away. I'm going to bring him on. Let's bring him on so he can tell us what he does. This guy is incredible. Paul, how are you, buddy? I'm doing awesome. How are you? Doing great, doing great. So tell us about uh, the Maverick. Hey, I'm, go I'm Paul Fink, the Maverick millionaire, and I created myself to be the Maverick years and years and years ago, and finally people caught on and started calling me it. But uh, how to do it different, how to really create your magic of who you are, fill your fullest potential to create all that you want. Most of us live under our value, under who we really are inside and under who we were born with. And I help people bring all that to the surface so that they can really create a lifestyle, create an income, and create a passion for everything that they do and live it every single day at a level 10. That's awesome. I love that. So who is the type of person that can, uh, you know, come and, and learn from you? Is it real estate only? Is it, I mean, can you tell us a it, little bit about? Across the board. I, I've been an entrepreneur for 35 years, and so my heart and soul is for entrepreneurs. And so I work with people that are either absolutely hardcore, fast entrepreneurs, across the board in multiple industries, or those people that are looking to transition to become entrepreneurs. That being said, uh, I've also been a real estate investor for the last 20 years and so catered to the real estate community and was also a realtor and a mortgage broker, understand all sides of it. And most people in real estate, they get into it thinking, oh, they're gonna do one deal, two deals, three deals. They'll, they'll do a little bit and they'll dabble in it. I teach them how to really scale it how to approach it like a business, not so that it takes full-time time and energy, but that they get full-time results from it so that they can really build a legacy from it instead of just a dabbling hobby income. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. It makes total sense. And by the way, look at this gentleman. Look at the charisma. Look at the energy he's got. This is a father of six, and all that energy, you know he's got great time management. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yes. Uh, I am a father of six, three sets of twins with a passionate relationship with my wife. And it's kind of proof of the pudding of what you can create when you have the desire and, and the tools and strategies behind it to really fulfill. Right. Is that we've created a magnitude. Now uh, the test of time has kind of passed. Uh, my youngest are 20, 21, and 25. So uh, they're my best testimonials of what we, you can create when you have a desire and a drive. and. They're all just amazing contributors to human, to the, our society, to our communities all around the world. And time management is cornerstone. Almost every entrepreneur has challenges with that. Um, and I don't know whether this is an okay to do, but I would love to give a gift if I could to uh, everybody that's our, listening. Our listeners love gifts. I, I mean, they, they are looking to learn from some of the best in the business. You're absolutely one of those people that can help teach that. So what are you giving them? I, with all that I've done and all my experience, so I've got a ton of training, ton of information to give out, and we've got it accessible now. We've got five uh, five-day webinar series on time management, which is one of the biggest challenges for entrepreneurs. How do they really focus their energy and get what is important done in any given day? It's, it's a challenge even for the successful one. <laughs> It's one of those ongoing struggles, no matter where you're at. That's right. And so we've got a five-day webinar series that also comes with a free consultation with me on top of that. So this is just a huge gift. This isn't a, a sell-a-thon. This isn't an upsell. This isn't a, This is pure magic that you can access immediately. Go to getmavericktime.com get mavericktime.com go there you'll see you just enter your email your your name you'll get free download and take it away there you have it a free gift um time management which is crucial i know i'm going to pick that up and more than that you get one on one time i love yes. that i love yeah. that you know i had a couple people walk out of your session you just had a session 
uh, to, you know, have, having a talk in there, and they came out just blown away from the content that you're, you're providing. So that's, you know, what drew you to wanting to, to give back? All, you, you have all this knowledge, you're successful, you're doing it yourself. What drew you to wanting to do it for others? Man, I've, I've always had a passion for, for seeing the light bulb go off, seeing that, that magic, if you will, of people just seeing the light. And I started off as, as a counselor. I got trained in clinical psychology to counsel people, and I feel like I've kind of come full circle. Now I'm counseling people to live a great life. And, and for me, there's no better reward in my day than to watch other people elevate to their highest and best. Yeah. Absolutely. Does that make That's sense? Fantastic. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, uh, oh, I do have a question. Um, in regards to like favorite apps, technology, things that kind of, you know, fast track your life. What's uh, your favorite? What's what, your top? What, what category would you like? Anything Let, from, from Facebook to Instagram. It could be fun. It could be business. It could, I mean, what, what's the app that if we looked at your battery settings is sucking up the most battery in your phone? Oh, oh there I'm not sure that's the, the the approach to use however what I can tell you we were just talking about this as far as how to um, manage your your time and taking notes my kids turned me on to this notability if you've ever taken notes on your tablet on an iPad anything yeah. and use the the, the um, app for notability it's a free download and you can take and digitalize all your notes so when you come to conferences like this you don't lose them they don't get lost in the shuffle you can actually digitalize them you actually create pdfs and that sort of thing i would also say uh, there's another app evernote oh, that evernote. i use yes, that down. is phenomenal and have you ever used the clip webbing or web clipping uh access to it it's a, it's kind of an add-on additional and it is by far, you want to do research on any topic on the internet, that is the easiest and best way. And I build methodologies around using that for my clients that just streamlines all research. Amazing. And really, time management techniques. That's awesome. Paul, thank you for coming on. If you don't mind, give us that website one more time before you uh, jump off. Absolutely. Get mavericktime.com for five day webinar series on time management. I'm Paul Fink, the Maverick Millionaire. Great to see you guys. Paul, great to see you, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate awesome. Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right, Chuck, we got our final speaker of the night. And final I must speaker. say, this one is a very exciting one. Yes. You want yes. to introduce our uh, next I'm, guest? I'm going to introduce him. I'm going to introduce him as my new favorite guy <laughs> from this whole thing. All right. It was just hilarious. Let's just Joe, bring him bring on, him Joe out. Arias. Joe, how Thank are you, guys. buddy? Thank you. Thank you. I'm good. I'm good. So, I'm not sure how many people he said the same, but I appreciate no, I it. I okay, no, hey, you can listen to the show later. You know, get us I on love YouTube. It. You'll be I able love to it. see. He doesn't say that. Thank you. Um, so, Joe, tell yeah. us, uh, you know, what, what is your company called? What do you do? The, the name of the company is called Real Success Investment. And we, you know, we flip houses ourselves. We own rentals outside of California. We have a portfolio of over 100 properties. And then we also have a, a department uh, that we do syndication. We buy 20, 50, 100 unit building. So for those beginners that are watching, what is a syndication? Syndication, basically, you, put a, 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 you do a crowdfunding. You put a group together uh, of, of, of investors that want to get a high return. The rentals right now, we do uh, single family uh, homes. So you probably put uh, $20,000 on cash. And then you buy for a hundred thousand dollar in a conventional loan. You buy a property, and it gives you between twenty and thirty percent return annual. That's for the rentals, right? If you don't have a lot of money, if you have a few hundred thousand dollars, you do syndication, where you get a much higher return. Right. And then we do education. We actually teach people how to flip houses, own rentals, and wholesale. I love wholesaling and doing flips, so we teach people how to so do who, that. So who do you teach? Who's your who's your you audience? Know, our audience, our main audience, is people that have a passion. People that have been like in the rat race, right? Like I was. People that want to break from the, the nine to five or they want to make some extra money. So, you know, people that either are in the rat race or they love being, you know, have, they love their job and they want to make extra money by investing a few hours a week. Where, where do you wholesale? Which um, area? We, LA? Yeah, the, the Rudy is the expert in wholesale. I, my expertise is on fix and flips. I, me and my partners have done over a hundred. So, um, we do in, in Los Angeles. We don't do out of it. A lot of people wholesale out of town. You know, you can do that if you want to. 
uh, but we don't. We mainly do California. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to Rudy after because uh, I've also been wholesaling for nine years, and I'm always looking to align myself with other all wholesalers. Hundred percent. You can compete with them, or you can join forces. You know, but that's life, right? Yeah. You can always look at the positive or the negative. So. Yeah. So, Joe, do you remember your first deal in real estate? I remember my Tell first. Tell us about it. It, it was it was about ten years ago. Um, I was struggling. I was I was a filmmaker. Uh, I was making money, but I was spending it. I was also a wedding photographer. I'll do the quinceañeras over the weekend. And I was like, you know, I, and I did tons of events, but I was not uh, fulfilling my, 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 you know, my, what I wanted to do. Yeah. And, um, you know, when you're working for something, but you're not really excited about it, you just do it. You're good at it. You know, like you, you know, you just, you don't have a passion. So I decided 10 years ago to get my first project. I, a friend of mine called me and said, Hey, I got this project. It's an agent in Coachella. And I bought this property for uh, $90,000. I got a hard money loan and I put a private money group. A few, few friends gave me some money, $20,000, $30,000. And we closed on the deal. I was, you know, 100% owner of the project. And I remodeled, put 45 k on it. And we sold it um, in the first day. This is my only project. I sold it literally on the first day, which is great. That's awesome. Um, you know, we have like a few days, but this was like before we even almost opened. I think this, this buyer wanted to get it. So technically, it was still on, on the market. And we, we made a $56,000 um, on the first deal. And uh, when I say we, it was just me. Um, and I learned a lot. That's I learned a, a lot. That's a, that's a huge return. And you did that, it sounds like, with OPM, other people's money. So. That's right. We leverage OPM. Yeah, that's awesome. So what is it that you are you know, telling people nowadays that, and I ask this question a lot because there's such a misconception on it's too late to get involved in real estate. It's behind us, right? We're at the peak. What do you tell people? You know, I'll, I'll, I'll use my own analogy. I'm a, I love tennis, right? I do tennis in my free time. So, you know, what I love about tennis is it's scalable. Like, you could be 80, you could be 85, you could be 20. It doesn't matter where you get in as long as you're passionate about it. Real estate is a little bit like that. You don't need to, like, be, you know, like 18 or 20. You can get in in real estate when you're 50, 60, 80. It doesn't matter. It's all about if you have passion, it's a, it's a scalable business, just as tennis is a scalable sport. What about... Um where the market is right now. For example, the way you purchase a property now, the way you underwrite it is going to be different than you did a year ago or five years ago, right? We're in a seller's market. So we have, yeah. you know, when you have uh, more people wanting to buy and less people wanting to sell, then, you know, it becomes a seller market. You know, no one really knows what's going to happen, uh, but the projections from people is the market is going to keep on growing until it, you know, the bubble bursts. No one knows. I heard people like experts talking five years ago. It was gonna, it was gonna burst. And you probably heard it all. Big experts. Yeah, big experts. So you know what, what I, what I do know is that is that millenn millennials finally are starting to purchase properties right now, and you know they're non-committal in the way that they they wanted to be nomads and, and not be attached to like, you know, like a job or or you know just just the idea of being a millennial is just being you know, like these membership things, right? Where you don't have to make these big commitments and finally they're starting to buy property. So what I'm seeing is a lot of, including my, my sister, she's a millennial, she's buying her first home right now. So I feel like in the, in the business of real estate, that's gonna keep on happening because now the millennials are starting to buy properties and that's not gonna end for the next three, four, five years. So even the market, the economy goes down, real estate will, will, will be fueled by that purchase uh, power. 100%. Yeah, yeah. agreed, Absolutely. agreed. Okay, Joe, so tell our you know, audience where they can find you, where they can connect with you and uh, you know, sign up for, for the stuff you do. Thank you so much. Yeah, if you do want to come to an in-person event, we are holding them in Santa Monica. Um, the, you can go to our website, which is www.ourrealsuccess.com. You can also follow me on Instagram at Joe Arias Investor or Real Success Investments. So those are like the three ways that people can actually take action. Awesome, and I'm throwing that on the screen for you guys Thank now, you. so make sure to connect with Joe. Uh, incredible individual, very successful, and at the end of the day, we always preach it, Chuck, right? Always learn from people that know what they're doing. 100%. And I, if I can close it with a thought, I just wanted to know that, you know, when you're an investor, you know, nothing is like all roses, you know, and, and rainbows. Um, I, you know, the name of the company is called Real Success because 
you know, we're building from our failures. And there's a lot of power in failing because uh, that's how we as human beings, we learn. So I want to make sure that if you're failing, you're doing a good job and hopefully it's, it's, it's learning from, from the, those things that you don't know that you don't know. So then you know them and then you can actually take action. On that. I, I love that. I love that you finished on that. I'm actually going to piggyback on that and ask you if you can remember one of your biggest failures. Many. Instead of real estate? Give us one, yeah. You well, you know, we, we made uh, 56K on the first deal. We made 108K on the second. And then I bought nine flips in like three months. I was like, oh, this is easy. This is, you know, and I did not have the systems. I did not have the scopes of work. I didn't know what kitchens work and what kitchens don't sell. I didn't have the team. And I started, la you know, lagging on lots of those flips. And I lost a lot of money left on the table. So that would be my, my biggest failure. Well, there you go. You heard it. E everyone has those. And as long as you get back up, you dust yourself off, keep going. Yep. I well, was Joe. just saying earlier today, my, my favorite new, uh, my favorite quote is, you don't, you don't know, know what you don't know. know. There you go. You don't. Yeah. Joe, thank, thank you so you much for joining you. us. You're welcome. We'll connect again offline. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. All right. So uh, we got our uh, final guest of the uh, evening. I feel like I said that three times already. But I this, know. <laughs> but he's the final one. This is We, we couldn't not bring him on. That's right? what we should have started with him. This yeah. is Jeff Fowler. Let's put him on. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. How you doing, man? Uh, thanks for having me, guys. You yeah. saved the best for last. That's right. right. There you go. <laughs> so, Jeff, you know, tell us, uh, tell us what you do, who you are. Right, right. Yeah, my name is Jeff Fowler. I'm with the Apartment Owners Association. And many of you may get this now and then as a courtesy. And if you're an AOA member, you get it every month. And this magazine here, we're not just a magazine, we're an association. We uh, have over 20,000 members, which is one of the largest individually organized groups of property owners in the state. And what we provide, what people really like, they love the magazine because it keeps you in the know. They like the fact that there's all these contractors and vendors and these guys are serious about helping people who have investment property. So you're not gonna get a retail quote. You say, hey, I got you out of the AOA magazine, and then they hook you up with the price that you need so that you can uh, make more money. And that's really what it's about. Our, what we wanna do is give you ideas to, he to either help you make money or keep more money. And so that's what we're for. It's 79 bucks a year, with, which is nothing and there's no per unit charge so we we're really um, focusing on mom and pops people that want to do it theirself and with it we have all the forms and you know like in covid when everybody was hoarding the um, the toilet paper what we did we said well we're going to be different than that we're going to give away our forms instead and instead of charging people for a seminar we're going to give everything away online so we have live streams that are free we have the seminars that are free you can even see the magazine for free online. <laughs> but anyway, that's what we want to do because I mean, I feel like that's incredible tough, value, you know? $79 a year. I don't even yeah. know how you survive with that, but that, that's incredible. Why did you get into it? Why, why, why this of all things? Right. So my dad founded the company, and it was back when Howard Jarvis was fighting for taxpayer rights, fighting against rent control, and so he's been fighting it for 40 years. But we just wanted to provide forms we wanted to provide services that people could use so that they could be successful we want everyone to be successful we want you to be able to leave a legacy we want you to be able to do it as fast as possible and so that's what all the information's for and that's why we have the forms to protect you while you're doing this because it's important to have the right stuff so there's kind of like two kinds of members those that signed up before they got in trouble <laughs> And they saved money than those that signed up after they got in legal trouble and they spent, they just lost a lot of money on a bad tenant. Well, that's, then they come and they finally find out about us. And then from then on, they're like, okay, I'm good now. That's yeah. awesome. Well, thank you so, so much for joining us. I'm glad we had you on. Um, I'm glad we got uh, to, to share with our viewers some of this fantastic value here. And uh, this was great. Uh, this was a great uh, this event. This was an altogether. amazing event. This was uh, we had some great minds here that we got to kind of pick, pick their brains and how they kind of view real estate in this new world that we're in. 
Uh, Jeff, it was a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, guys. And we'll connect again in the future. All right. Thank you so good. much. All right. Thank you. There we go. All right. All right. So, so that was, uh, I think it's time, Chuck. I think it's time to wrap it up. That was an incredible day. Uh, I learned a lot. I hope our viewers learned a lot. And I hope that you guys uh, get value from this. And if you are getting any kind of value, uh, make sure to subscribe. As I said before, it helps us a ton. It'll help us grow and bring on uh, valuable people to teach you how to crush it in real estate. Uh, Chuck, what are your thoughts of today? Uh, you know, I came here thinking like, okay, we're probably just going to have Amy. We're going to meet her in person finally. Um, we're going to have, uh, you know, Lloyd and Sam again. But you know what? It, it kind of took a different turn. We had a lot of really, really interesting guests here. I think every single one of these people here were just really, really, you know, full of fountain of, of, of knowledge. 100%. And um, it was great. It, you know, I thought we were only going to have like three people. We had like, what, seven or eight people? I think we had uh, eight to ten people at least, yeah. Yeah, no, it was great. <laughs> a lot of value, a lot of value. Great to be seen here. You know, even, you know, listen, you might do a loan for somebody, for one of these people's clients or one of these people. Yeah. And then I'm like, wait a second, weren't you at this expo? Boom, boom, boom. And then you get this automatic, you know, yeah, automatic credibility with these people. And you know what? I'm glad we did it. I know we were questioning it. It's a lot of work, bringing all the equipment, putting it together, setting up, taking down. Obviously, we have some help here. Uh, so, you know, that, that makes it easier. But after doing it, I realized how much valuable this is and not just that it's fun you know it's fun um i enjoy doing this i know you love doing this so i think we're gonna keep going yeah i think so too i mean we've definitely uh done a lot in the last what 30 days since we decided we're coming back yeah yeah absolutely we've done a lot um so thank you to our team and um we'll see you all on the next one where yes. are you there you are yeah we'll see you again on the next episode that was fun Till next time. Peace. Good luck to the editor on this. <laughs> <laughs>